as an army, better yet a navy. If you try to play a hater, better know it ain't gravy. GYGB, it's your man Coltrane, back on the scene, sleepy behind the ones and twos. Shout out to Docs, Big Mike, ride or die, summertime is over, school is now in session, boxing, number one sport in the world. Y'all know what's going on. Next weekend, box score. My man Casitas versus my man Juan Baby Bull Diaz. But no, ain't no titles on the line. Just a strictly lightweight fight to get, you know, that some confidence back in these fighters. As y'all know, Diaz lost his last fight to Casamayor, one of the slickest cats in the game. My man Diaz lost to one of the other slickest cats in the game and Nate Campbell. This fight is real interesting, you know. Um, like I said, they're both coming off losses. They're both trying to regain their confidence. At first, I was a little reluctant on why the fight is actually happening because from the Diaz party, because pardon me, Casitas can crack. We know that. You know, he could have won his fight. Diaz had no shot winning his fight. You know, Nate pretty much dogged him for 12 straight rounds, with the exception of a few in the middle. But uh, Casitas probably should have beat Casimir. Now, that's all I would have, could have, should have. But my point being, at that particular time was, you know, this is a tough, tough fight, and it's a fight, and I'll get into it later, my prediction that Diaz potentially could get knocked out and pretty much be ruined. Now, Diaz, he's a come forward straight fighter. You know, nothing slick about him. You know, what you see is what you get. He's a volume puncher. He throws a lot of punches. He stays busy, but he don't. He can't crack. So my question is, how is he going to be able to keep uh, Casitas off of him? Now, Casitas, he's not, you know, I'm not putting him out to be Manny Pacquiao or nothing, but, you know, he, he, he can crack. And he comes straight forward as well. So you got two straight forward fighters coming. I'm going with the heavier hitter. And that's Casitas. I got. I'm picking Casitas uh, by a, a, a late knockout. Hey, Mrs. Sleepy. <laughs> Miss Sleepy. <laughs> that's how we do on GYGB. We keep it moving. Sleepy. Cars you grow bicycle. Historic. Tustin playground. Part of one of the many areas that help raise Kobe Bryant amongst other great legends like uh, Will Chamberlain. Uh, we're gonna get into the Juan Diaz versus Casitas fight. I kind of differ a little bit from my man Cole Train. Why? I think uh, I think Diaz is gonna outwork Casitas. Like, um, you know, you know, Mr. Mums, his chin could be a little suspect, but I think it's gonna be a fight where it's gonna, it's gonna be a very action-packed fight. But uh, the thing about Casitas, he's gonna be there for all that work, and I think he's gonna get outpointed. I think Diaz is going to win in the decision. It might be, it might be a fight. We might have to see Diaz get up off the mat. But I think the, the butt whipping he took from the last fight, we're going to see a real determined Diaz. Now the reason why the determination of Diaz was there with Nate Campbell, when he was dealing with an angry, angry, <laughs> angry. I don't want to call him an old man, but this is Bernard Part Two. Yo, you gotta look at that fight. Like that fight. Mentally and physically, now it might not have showed it in the fight. I think it, that fight took a lot out of him. He got beat up in that fight. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about when he fought Nate Campbell. Right. And Casitas just got knocked out. I, I'm more of a, a of a person that rather a fighter get knocked out, straight knocked out, than get beat up for 12 straight rounds. Uh -huh. And plus, and, and Casitas could have won his fight. Now Styles make fights and all that, but like I said, they 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 both coming straight like two trains on the uh, same track collide. I like the stronger train, man. Like, I'm, I, you know, it's a fight I could be wrong. I Who's don't know. the busiest of the two? Oh, definitely, Juan. The Bull. Now, uh. Um, Baby Bull is the busiest. You think Casitas, you think Casitas, as far as defense wise, he's not getting out the way of any punches? That's the thing. <laughs> so. they, call him, they call him the uh, European version of a Tour of Gotti. You know, I don't know if that's a good thing, and I don't know if that's a bad thing. But like you said, he's, he's not moving. He's coming straight forward, like Juan Diaz is. But Juan Diaz ain't throwing for no tricky angles or nothing. He's gonna be right there to be hit as well. I'm just going, it's one of those fights where I'm kind of going against what I believe and I'm going with just pure strength. And I, I, I just think Casitas is going to knock him out. I just think Casitas has one punch knockout power. And I think he has the ability to put him on his back. But, you know, that's what I'm predicting. I want to get into some news out there. If you don't know, you must be living in a cave or you just don't know. Oscar. The Golden Boy sleeps laughing. Y'all can't see him. We're going to get more than this. We got to talk about it because it's happening. De La Hoya is fighting Manny Pacquiao, as I like to call him, Manny Wackyow. December 6th, you know, as y'all know, De La Hoya is supposed to fight Floyd. That didn't happen. So now he's fighting the ex-Flyweight. 
An X fly wing. Uh, wasn't Oscar's goal to fight the best and then win a title? See, Oscar's goal right now is to score a goal. And the goal is in Manny Pacquiao. There's no goal with Margarito. There's no goal with uh, Paul Williams. There's no goal with Berto. Or Why is that? Because they don't have... They're not, they're not the number one pound for pound fighter in the world right now. And they don't have the stardom that a Manny Pacquiao had. So, and he's the number one. If you, if you listen to something Oscar keeps saying, he's saying two things. He said, I'm looking for a big fight to end the year with. And he's looking to beat the best fighter in the world. So, my question would be to Oscar, for the sake of argument, if David Hay was the number one fighter in the world, would he be going after David Hay? I, I seriously doubt it. I'm just stretching to make a point. And the point is, Manny Pacquiao is, this fight is going to be so easy for De La Hoya. And I don't want to jump ahead into the box, I mean, to the war going on. But the guy is just too, too small for De La Hoya. And De La Hoya, you know, he, he's no spring chicken when it comes to boxing. He knows how to box. He knows how to jab. And one thing De La Hoya does beautifully is hook off the jab. Cameraman, please focus. <laughs> yeah. I'll see he, hook, going. he hooks off. He hooks off the jab real well, and I just don't know how Pacquiao's gonna get out of way of the, of the jab. I just don't see it. But you know, I don't. It's. I'm not mad at it. I'm. But Bruce Lee, it. Bruce Lee fought people that was bigger than him on Game of Death. He beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That was actually Bruce. Well, it was. Remember they had a, a fill. He shot. He shot. Was a he shot. But he shot the end. He did shot the end first. He shot the end first. He did shoot the end first. So he was able to beat guys who was consistently bigger than him. And remember, Bruce Lee is the one who had the idea for the UFC. Oh, you might MMA. be selling. You might be selling me here, sleep. Bruce, I was something. It's something in the eyes of that crazy little dude. That I sleep. You're gonna be shocked. We're gonna get into this later, but sleep don't think it's a layup as I do. But you know, that's more to follow. So. But that's pretty much it that's going on. You know, in two weeks, we got my man Jawan Guzman versus uh, my man Nate Campbell. You know, I love, I'm, I'm jumping ahead early. I love Jawan Guzman against Nate. Too much athleticism, too much youth for my man Nate Campbell. Oh, shout out to everybody out there. Volley Boy, Dirk Degler, Green King, AC Milan, Respect, Champ, Sleep. Only on Guards of Grill Boxing in 2008 where you'll have an argument about who Roy Jones stood have fought when he was had his middleweight and light heavyweight reign. Because we got the best fans in the world. They know the game of boxing. Uh, my man, Nate Campbell, that's taking me to the Guzman fight, where as much as I like Guzman, I'm just going on the hunger factor, man. I think my man, Nate Campbell, is on his Bernard thing right now. Yeah, but you know Sleep, you mentioned Bernard, and I'm glad you did that, because that's an excellent parallel for the Guzman fight. Bernard... One of the things that Bernard has had trouble with and will continue to have trouble with is athletic fighters. Athleticism is speed. That's always, that always well, gave Bernard trouble. Let's, 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 let's give Bernard credit. You have to have something up here to go along with your athleticism. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying the right. style. I'm just, I'm just talking about the style. Now, Bruce Van does have a lot. He does have a He's lot. He's short. Effort. But I think Camel is just on some... Excuse my language, some effing stuff. <coughs> and I just think it's going to be... All right. He's going to do... He's at the point in his career where he's going to do whatever it takes to win a fight. But Sleep, answer this. How's he going to find Gooseman? And you know how slippery Gooseman is. Bro, he's going to find him. He's going to put him in a phone booth and wrestle him. He's going to take him to the MMA man. That's how he's going to find him. How you find what's not there, though? You grab him. You grab him. That's why, that's why my parallel for Bernard Hopkins is there. I think it's going to be a dirty fight. I think he's going to make the fight ugly. He gonna put Gooseman in situations that he's never been in before. I just, the know. thing about it, Gooseman's 32 years old. He's not young. Right. He's not young, but he's a younger fighter than Nate is. Right. I just think Nate is at that point in his career. Where I, I feel think, you. I think all these opportunities he's getting, he's gonna take. He's gonna take a big advantage of. I got family members leaving. We're actually at a cookout. We had a cookout. The streets of it's Labor Day weekend. You know what I'm saying? Monique. Alright, <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> We're not chopping that either. Yeah. We're in the hood, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, what's that? What's that there? What is that? To the to the left of you. Oh, on the ledge. On the ledge. On the ledge. In the cup. Oh, <laughs> that's a little juice. <laughs> Shout out to Slide Dog. So <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Slide Dog yeah, 900. Get you know, a glimpse of uh, War going outside of De La Hoya Pacquiao. A quick, quick glimpse, because you got a little perspective. I mean, 
you know, all the factors is there for De La Hoya to knock this guy out. But the only factor is not there. De La Hoya's not a fighter. You know what I'm saying? He's a businessman. How you doing, sir? <laughs> He's a businessman. He's taking fights for, for the monetary reasons. He shows his heart and his focus is not there. And there's something in that crazy little eyes of Manny Pacquiao. Like, this is a little guy. There's, there's something about him that he may make this fight interesting by outworking De La Hoya. And what if all of a sudden De La Hoya can't find him? I know he's one left hook away from being knocked out in the fight, but what if the left hook don't land? I'm just saying what if. You know, life is all about the what ifs. I'm just saying what if.